The worst of the outbreaks was reported at Alexandra, a small predominantly black township not far from the capital of Johannesburg. Six people were killed when fighting broke out during a peace rally, attended by more than 2,000 armed in Carter Freedom Party supporters. It's claimed the fighting waged out of control for more than an hour, with police unable to control violence between members from rival black factions. Another man died after being admitted to Alexandra Hospital a short time later. And in Johannesburg, 10 people died in a spate of smaller clashes. The worst of those was at a workers' hostel where five men were bashed to death. The violence comes despite peace meetings last week between the Encarta and rival African National Congress parties where leaders had called for supporters to put aside their fighting while a solution is worked out. Brisbane Water Superintendent Tony New is the man who recommended the transfer of the 11 paramedics. He says you need look no further than a map to see the reason why. The uh, decision was made uh, on, on the uh, uh, conditions prevailing and the uh, trend of workload which indicated clearly that there was a, a greater capacity and response for the paramedics to be based at uh, a better bay, uh, preferably to the peripheral Tookley. But Tookley residents say their out of the way location is the very reason they need the paramedics close by. We've got a, a, a massive population here, Bruce, of senior citizens, in fact the highest number of senior citizens concentration in the state. We've got power stations, commuting workforce at large, and we have a very, very large number of young families that came here in the late 80s. So we feel that the ambulance paramedics service is definitely warranted. On weekdays, a two-person paramedic team will man the Tookley station between 9am and 6pm. Outside those hours, they'll have to make a drive of at least 15 minutes to attend a Tookley emergency. Unfortunately, as we all know, we don't have nine to five heart attacks and illnesses. 15 minutes is too long during a heart attack. But ambulance officers say the coastwide installation of the new Kerry Packer donated heart start machines will allow general duties officers to revive heart attack victims. All have the ability now to uh, carry out the function of uh, electrical defibrillation and, uh, and reverse cardiac arrest. A public meeting will be held at the Tookley station on March 28 to discuss the issue. Bruce McKenzie, NBN News. Announcing the new rate of 12.25% today, the Permanence Managing Director, Frank Wotherspoon, said the move is more than just matching the competition, but trying to provide real benefit for local people. I believe it will stimulate the building industry. I think it will create more job opportunities. It will certainly stimulate the economy generally to the benefit of all of our community. The 12 and a quarter percent rate will be available to new home builders, buyers of existing houses and vacant land for building, and existing borrowers wanting to refinance their mortgage. It won't increase for 12 months, but then will revert to the existing rates charged to all borrowers. But how will existing customers feel about continuing to pay 14 percent? So far as the existing borrowers are concerned, they're already enjoying interest rates that are predominantly a half percent below the rest of the market. Certainly, so far as the future is concerned, we acknowledge our responsibility to them. Certainly, when economic and financial uh, matters are, are right, we, we look forward to reducing our existing borrowers' rates further. The Society has allocated $50 million for the introduction of this new product, as it calls it. And while there will be an initial reduction in income revenue, Mr Wotherspoon says the long-term benefits are far, far greater. We saw the injection the best part of a thousand million dollars of outside funds in calendar year 1990. This did provide a buffer for the local economy but I think that finished about Christmas time when the major earthquake reconstruction was completed. Since then unemployment has increased, the recession has bitten further, economic activity has slowed down. Now I think that it's time for all local people 
who have the opportunity to do what they can to provide benefit for our community. We're trying to do that. John Schuster arrived in Australia last June with a big reputation, but it took more than a little time for him to adjust to the new code. Now, at last, he's showing the form that made him one of the most exciting rugby union players in the world. Kim, Lenane, Hagen has plenty of runners. Out it goes to Schuster, and Schuster powers straight through Doggy's tackle. Well, Schuster really has looked classy this afternoon in this second half. Schuster's form has forced Knight selectors to break a golden rule and change a winning combination. He comes in for Adrian Brunker, while fellow Kiwi Tony Kemp has retained his place on the other wing. After last week, the rest of the side virtually picked itself. Usually the thought of underarm bowling in Australia is enough to bring out the temper in any Kiwi. But that hasn't been the case with these fellows. At least, not yet. Bowlers uh, seem to get on very well together. If you see the, the players over these last couple of days are mixing together. Uh, but when it comes to Friday, Saturday and Sunday, they're playing for their country and they'll do it properly. The star-studded New Zealand side went through its paces against a combined Newcastle team at Waratah today. World Pairs champions Peter Bellis and Rowan Brassey were in fine touch and know they'll need to maintain that form to be assured of a win in the Test match. We play uh, Ian Schubach and Trevor Morris who are the current uh, Commonwealth Games champions so there's nothing in it. Uh, they, they beat us in the last Test series uh, while well, we had the advantage the time before. So you know with the calibre of players uh, one day maybe yours and the next it mightn't be. It promises to be a gripping contest and you can catch all the action live from one o'clock on Saturday and Sunday afternoons right here on NBN. The reduction of lead in petrol has made significant improvement in the amount of the substance making its way into our system from that source. But this still leaves two other major environmental sources of lead. Industrial emissions, particularly in the Bullaroo Argentin area, are known to contain high concentrations of lead. However, the Public Health Unit says there's little information on the level of exposure of young children. The study would sample the blood lead levels of children aged from 1 to 4 and also measure the lead content of soil and dust throughout the Newcastle area. The other main source of the substance is in weathered paint flaking from old buildings. Many people once covered their weatherboard houses with lead-based paint and recent earthquake repairs have disturbed the deeper layers creating a potential hazard. Youngsters will be targeted in the study because lead has subtle effects on the developing nerve system of babies and infants in particular. After a cloud storm erupted around five this morning, trainer Max Lees delayed the final training run of Jester Roy Allen till after six. On dawn, the Broadmeadow track was a hive of activity, but there was an expectant buzz about the track work of the Rory's Jester, Raff and Royale filly. The Newcastle Jockey Club granted special dispensation to run on the number two track, and Jester Royale worked with well-performed galloper Mocker. The pair began their run from the five furlongs and built up a solid pace as they came down the main straightaway. Max Lees looked on anxiously as Mocker and Jester Royale completed their task and in summary Lees was pretty happy with the run. They went uh, a good strong three quarter pace from the from the thousand metres and they run home the last two and they've ran one three and a half for the uh, for the thousand and thirty seven two the last three so it was good work yeah. The likeable Broadmeadow trainer has experienced the sweet taste of golden slipper success with a brilliant Luskin star way back in 1977. Jester Royale has the pedigree to win the slipper as her dad Rory's Jester got up to win in 1985.
But Jester Royale's task will be a tough one after drawing barrier 13, and Lees wants her to jump well. The horse that drew inside a, uh, David Hayes' horse, it goes very fast, and it's his first start in blinkers, so I think it'll go very fast, and she might be able to tail it across and just hope she can get a sit just behind the lead somewhere. Fingers crossed to get your second sliver? Yeah, yeah, more or less. The HRAC represents the 13 councils in the region. Meeting today, members accused State Rail of putting a multi-million dollar industry to ransom. It would appear that the SRA is incapable of getting long-haul coal to the port quickly enough. The association claims coal rail haulage is so far behind schedule, ships are waiting up to seven days to be loaded. Well, that's approximately a three-quarter of a million tonne shortfall. Uh, which represents something like $2 million per week profit to Australia. A major worry for local councils is that this backlog could force haulage off the tracks and onto the road, pouring extra traffic onto an already overworked system. Peter Ryan, NBN News. Newcastle is a prominent wool trading centre, but when the wool is sold, 75% of the product is shipped overseas for scouring or cleaning of the wool. At a meeting this week of the Hunter Region Association of Councils, plans were announced to reverse that flow. plant up in this region would process about 25,000 tonnes per annum of greasy wool, and it would then produce wool grease, which would then turn into refined lanoline, for pharmaceutical use, for all export. The overall cost that we're talking about generally at the present time for a turnkey idea would be about 25 to 30 million dollars Australian. Council members inspected wool cleaned by the process taken from the only other Australian scour of this type, which is in Perth. The Hunter Economic Development Council will now look for potential investors. It's believed there has been strong interest from Korea. Police were called to the Calandra home after firefighters discovered the man's body in a bedroom. The house was destroyed by a fire, which apparently started around 10 o'clock last night. His body was badly burnt, and police haven't said whether there were signs of any other injury. Detectives say neighbours heard an argument in the house shortly before the fire was reported, and then saw a car speed away. With little to go on, they'll start interviewing neighbours later this morning to determine how the man died and if the fire was deliberately lit. Serbia's Borisav Jovic quit last week after the Presidential Council rejected his plan to use the army to bring an end to the civil unrest. But he's returned to the post after pressure from the Serbian parliament. His move should ease tension in the country, although the crisis is still far from over. Britain's controversial poll tax has been abolished. The community charge that sparked a nationwide revolt will be replaced by a more conventional rate system. Environment Secretary Michael Heseltine made the announcement just a few hours ago. The Tory party's decision is a slap in the face for former Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, who fought hard to keep the tax. Good. Through the legs. And the 
winning volley. What a shot. The vehicle has been taken to Newcastle Police Station where it's being thoroughly dusted and fingerprinted by the Physical Evidence Department. The utility was located after the Homicide Squad issued a public appeal late last night, providing details of the vehicle's appearance and registration. Meanwhile, results of a post-mortem carried out on the 29-year-old's body are still to be released. Also yet to be released, the victim's name, though it has been confirmed he was living at Adamstown Heights, having originally come from Great Britain. It's understood relatives living in Australia will formally identify the body later today. It is known the man was killed in an execution-style murder before being bound and weighted and thrown in Lake Macquarie at Point Wollstonecroft, just south of Pulbar Island. At this time, the Homicide Squad has shifted the focus of its investigation to the Lake Macquarie Yacht Club area in the hope of finding more clues. Belmont emerged as the minor premiers and advanced to the decider with an easy win over Merriweather last weekend. Captain Mark Curry has been in brilliant form all season and he's keen to win the toss and bat first on a pitch that should hold up. Well the pitch last week played quite well. It was a little bit slow but it was very even on the first day and uh, on the second day it was... Uh, it, it, was, it, start, it started to turn a little bit but uh, it was still OK. I think this week, wicket today, uh, tomorrow should be pretty similar. The outfield at the number one sports ground has copped its fair share of criticism during the week but will be faster on Saturday and Sunday. This will boost Belmont's all-round depth. I think we've got uh, the best batting depth in the competition, although Charles Town might disagree after their last wicket performance last week where they put on 80 runs, but I think our batting depth is, is excellent and um, I think we've got a spearhead in Kevin Bray who uh, is unequalled in the competition. I think he's a superb prospect, not only for Newcastle but for higher honours and uh, I think that he's our, our trump card. Charles Town scraped into the grand final by the skin of their teeth, helped by a 10th wicket stand of 81. They were in a precarious position at 9 for 121, chasing 201. No one is more surprised to be playing tomorrow than their captain. We, we really didn't think that we were a chance at, at 9 for 121, uh, but David Brown and Tony Gilbertson just did a fantastic job to get us there. And as with Mark Curry, Mark Hall sees his batting lineup as Charles Town's strength. Our batting has been solid all year. And, uh, and did the job against Belmont in a quiet way. I guess we had some luck there. But uh, our batting and our fielding and enthusiasm, I think. It was a hands-on experience for the 1,000 pupils who were learning about the earth and the dangers that beset it. As part of the school's environmental education policy, the school turned green for the day. Turf was laid outside the canteen by a host of eager gardeners, while other students dug deep into their energy reserves to plant a variety of trees throughout the grounds. Displays were set up in the hall to teach the youngsters about the importance of conservation and the management of natural resources, helped along by groups including the Wilderness Society and the Hunter District Water Board. And the green theme extended even to refreshments. The proof of the pudding was, where the environment is concerned, you can't have your cake and eat it too. They say there's no such thing as a free lunch and the Newcastle Chamber of Commerce presented Nick Greiner with a hefty bill in the form of its 1991 budget submission. Four main points we have put in our submission are the upgrading of the Cabbage Tree Road to Williamtown Airport, the establishment of a technology park at the university, the upgrading of container facilities at the port of Newcastle and the honeysuckle bus rail interchange. But it seems the hunter has some waiting to do before it gets in for its financial chop. 
There are needs just as serious as the ones you described for the hunter, really in almost every region of New South Wales. The Premier was willing to involve the government in the future redevelopment of the Honeysuckle site. He expects the plans to be available for public inspection by the end of July. I've said today that we'll provide the, uh, the upfront money but the Property Services Group wanted 2.7 million of memory uh, to get the planning done. Uh, it's obviously a time when uh, no one's asked for, for tens or hundreds of millions of dollars because they know they wouldn't get it. But with the government apparently reluctant to commit itself beyond the planning stage, the Premier may well be right when he describes the project as an extremely long-term one. There's no way that this project's going to be finished uh, this side of the year 2000. It hopefully will be substantially started and large parts of it will be operating and, and underway. It was late afternoon when the Cherokee Warrior, along with two other aircraft, lifted off from the Cessnock Aerodrome for one of its last flights of the day, having already been up on at least 15 occasions as part of the North Lake Macquarie Cub and Scout District's Air Activities Weekend. Hired from the Hunter Air Company and piloted by Sydney aviator Gavin Mohead, the craft carried Cub leaders Kevin Thomas and Joe Oakes and Joe's daughter Joanne. Joe videoed the takeoff and then, assuming all was well, stopped taping. Moments later, he rolled again as when the plane climbed to 100 metres, it suddenly struck trouble. We've done a steep bank to the right and he said we've got um, engine trouble and then uh, next minute we started descending into this paddock over there. We um, landed up probably 500 metres up further up the paddock and came through two fences and we came to a stop here. When we stopped there was very very strong smell of fuel and um, we all rapidly got out of the plane as quick as we could. The source of the fuel leak was the plane wing, which rammed into a wooden fence post. However, despite that and the hurried exit, the craft and its passengers suffered no further injury, all thanks, according to Kevin, to the skill and quick thinking of pilot Gavin Mohead. Oh, you done a good job, actually, to get us down, yes, very good. The incident had been reported to the Bureau of Air Safety Investigation, but a spokeswoman said this afternoon it had been determined the plane had suffered a complete engine failure and that no further inquiry would be conducted.